My name is this comic maker and welcome back to my channel just a quick disclaimer before we get started there are some images and plot related topics that will spoil the Steven Universe movie just a tiny tiny bit although I won't be going much into the plot if you want to avoid any spoilers at all I suggest you go check out the movie and then come back here Anywho, at the beginning of this year, I made a video about the season finale for Steven Universe that ended with the episode Change Your Mind. In fact, if you want to check it out, I'll leave an iCard for it here. But after the season ended, we were teased with the Steven Universe movie. And after much waiting, we were blessed with all the goodies on September 2nd, and the whole Steven Universe fandom fell in love with the little angry and pink bouncy piece of bubblegum, Spinel but we will talk a little bit more about the movie in a moment. First, let's talk a little bit about the painting process. So to start, I've had these two wooden canvases for so long that I can't even remember where I got them from at this point, but you can usually find them at most art stores. But I started out by getting some gesso and prepping the wood. If you don't know what gesso is, it's essentially a base for the surface you're going to paint on. Typically, the canvas material that you paint on is a tan color and is then primed or covered with gesso, which is why you see white canvases at art stores. It basically acts much like a blank piece of paper for you to work with. In fact, here is a little tip. If you've ever painted on canvas and found that your paint is just not filling the canvas to the point where you need multiple layers, it might be because there isn't enough gesso to fill in all the pores of the canvas, so it might just need another layer. A lot of cheaper canvases tend to have this problem, but if you don't feel like going through the process of buying gesso and waiting for a whole nother layer to dry, that's okay. But it's just something to keep in mind. For this painting, I did three layers of gesso before doing my sketch with a red colored pencil. Before I did any of this though, I planned out what I was going to be painting. To do this, I usually sketch out my ideas in my sketchbook, but for this I decided that I wanted to make sure that the colors I wanted to use were planned out first, so I actually did my sketches this time digitally and colored it. Here are the sketches for my planning phases. Quick side note, and I think I've talked about this before. Do you guys ever go through this? Often when I'm planning and sketching out my ideas, I found that I like my sketches so much more than the final product. I definitely had a hard time making the final lines anything but thick, and I think that the sketches were much more successful at capturing the body language of the characters, but that will be something I make sure I keep refining and getting better at the next couple times I try this out. Next, I filled in all the spaces with colors following my rough sketch as closely as possible. After that, I did the painstaking task of lining everything and hoping I don't mess up the painting. The biggest issue I was having was making sure I had enough of a mixed color so that I could fill in an area and have colors left over in case I mess up and need to go back and fix things. Also, acrylic paint dries darker than what is mixed so there are a couple areas, especially in the second painting, where I needed to go back over some colors to lighten them up. In fact, the footage that you see for the second painting of Spinel that I work on is not the final version because I actually took some time after filming and fixed up some of the colors. For this painting, I also used a bunch of different kinds of acrylic paint. Some of it was the Basics Acrylics made by Liquitex, and some of it was straight up acrylic paint that I snagged from Walmart because I didn't have nearly enough kinds of pinks to mix to make the different kinds of pinks in this video. So I think that it's a great example of how you really don't need fancy fancy stuff to make a painting. You can make a painting with pretty much anything. Uh, I think that there's something to be said about the longevity of your painting with cheaper paints, but it is doable and if you're just practicing and you're trying to get something out, then I think that any old acrylic paints would work for this. Back in the day when I was in college I used to use oil paints a lot and acrylics actually frustrated me because they dry so darn fast. But for stuff like this, acrylics really work the best. And at the end I finished it off with another Liquitex 
basics item where it was just a matte finish that I painted over the whole thing to make sure that my painting is nice and secure on there so nothing happens to it. As for the brushes I used, I used the Winsor Newton brushes that I got from Michaels. So am I a fancy artist? No. Did I definitely make a whole trip to Walmart just to pick up more tiny tubes of pink paint just for this painting? Yes. Am I ever prepared for anything in my life? No. <laughs> so I just do what I can, I guess. <laughs> but as comic maker, why did you paint this when you could easily make this digitally or with Copics? I mean, come on. It would save you a lot of time and you wouldn't have to worry about painting all these tiny little details. Well, Banana Man, I have really been wanting to paint more recently and I thought this would be a fun way to do it. Little did I know how much time and control it would take to pull it off successfully. I learned a lot from it though, so next time I attempt something like this, I think I'll be more prepared. Well, that's good. Learning is very important. Sounds like you need any learning that you can get. Hmm, <laughs> is that so? Ugh. And now that we've talked about the process, let's talk a little bit about the movie. Being a fan of the series, I enjoyed the movie a lot, actually. And while there were a lot of great animation moments that were amazing in the finale, you know with this being a movie, a lot more money was put into animation this time around. I thought that it was a great standalone movie as well as a good segue into the new chapter of Steven's life. According to the creator, Steven isn't over, and we'll be seeing more of our crystal friends in this two year time skip in the seasons to come, which is exciting. I just have no idea where they will take the series at this point, but I'm happy to go into whatever they bring to us blind. Now, there are flaws like all things, yes. There are times when the animation is a little wonky and Steven looks like his old style instead of his two year older counterpart but the inconsistencies in animation is something that has historically been in the show since the beginning. So while that's a gripe, it wasn't that big of a deal. There are some other things too that are heavily spoiler related, but I'll leave those out for now as I really recommend seeing the movie. But obviously you have to see the show to give the movie a shot. And if you've never seen the show, I say give it a try. There are some parts of the show that drag on, but there is so much good that Steven has brought and when it's good, it's really great. Spinel was super fun to paint. It was really, really cool doing that old retro style and it was also really cool doing this other style that I'm not going to talk too much about, uh, but it seems like the movie was very heavily influenced by really old Disney cartoons or really old Disney movies and even some of the music references that as well but it was an absolute joy to work on this. One of the things I really like about painting is just getting into it and spending time filling in colors and getting all the details and then really seeing the painting come to life so I'm glad that I got to paint in this week's video. Overall would I do this again? Definitely yes but making something like this again will take a lot of planning and I would like to take a different approach to it next time. Originally, I wanted to paint in the style of a specific artist, but it turned into just a painting instead. But what do you guys think? Would you like to see me make paintings similar to this again? Or is there something else you would like to see me try? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, as always, videos like this are possible because of my amazing patrons, as well as the support of my other viewers who like, comment, and share my videos. In fact, if you're new and liked what I do, please consider subscribing. Well, that's it for me this week. Thank you all so much for stopping by, and I hope that we can draw together again soon. Bye, guys.